Kumagawa is by most people's assessment the best character in Madaka Box, and well I'd have to agree, his character is easily one of, if not the most well written in the series, exploring the themes of nihilism and self-loathing in a brilliantly nuanced way. Now you may already know since it's my most popular video ever, but I've already discussed Kumagawa on this channel, however although I do still think that video quality wise holds up, I find it is way too limited in scope and so today I'll rectify that and give a far more expansive and detailed analysis of his character. So if you find yourself entertained at any point during the video then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell, as I cannot explain to you how much such a small action can do for this channel. And if you want to go the extra mile to support this channel even further then consider pledging to my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. Kumagawa Misogi is the minus among minuses. He was born under the wrong star so to speak and by nature is a born loser, or maybe I should instead say by his nurture, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. Kumagawa ever since he was a child was someone who lost, any endeavour he would undertake would end in his failure and any attempt at happiness he reached towards would lead to misfortune. By the age of 3 Kumagawa already had a nihilist's mindset, as he tells Madaka, nothing matters in life, it doesn't matter what you do in life because in the end it means nothing, you aren't born for a reason, you are born for no reason, and so you will live your life for no reason and then die for no reason. In short he believed that life meant diddly squat, and it's due to this mindset that Kumagawa became so twisted, he did anything he wanted as in the end it didn't matter, however even if this is what he preached, Kumagawa's beliefs were not this simple. It wasn't that Kumagawa thought everything was meaningless, instead he only thought of the things he disliked as meaningless. As said before, Kumagawa is a born loser. As a minus he never gets the happy ending, he always ends up defeated and sad as that's how it's meant to be. Kumagawa in a slight spout of simulated reality, genuinely believes that he will always lose, he believes that it is his role in life to lose. Everything is meaningless not because there's no reason to it, but instead because there's no free will. Kumagawa's insistence that he will always lose is a coping mechanism. To make sense of the constant misfortune he goes through, Kumagawa chooses to believe that it's all for a reason. He may preach that things are meaningless, but to him there is nothing more scary than that. Which is why in the face of his own misfortune he deludes himself into thinking it's just because he's a minus, that he is destined to lose and be misfortunate. If he is a born loser then it's only normal he will lose. If you look at his fights throughout the series, there are many where you could conclude it was Kumagawa's win. But to Kumagawa these are all losses, as he won by cheap tricks or by a surprise attack or so on and so on. There's always a reason that he lost as he is convinced he can't win. Unless it's a clear win or a clear loss he will always warp the result of a fight to meet his preconceived idea that he will always lose. Which is why he no matter what could not defeat Madaka, because in the same way he always lost, she always won. Now I won't go too much into Madaka's character, since I've already made a dedicated video on her and an analysis of her and Kumagawa's relationship to her in relation to their fights, but I will touch on the key points. Madaka is the opposite of Kumagawa, where as he wallowed in self-pity as someone who forever loses, Madaka acted the part of the protagonist of a goddess. However both of these are just simulated realities, Kumagawa is unlucky sure, but he can win, and Madaka may be abnormally gifted, but she is still human. Through his fight with Madaka, Kumagawa was shown something very important, that someone like him can win. Sure he may have lost, but for the first time he was satisfied by his loss, as how did Madaka defeat him? She did so while well under the effect of Bookmaker, in other words she beat him as a born loser. In theory they should have drawn, neither should have overcome the other, yet Madaka still won. Even with the mindset of Kumagawa she won, and there could not be any clearer sign to Kumagawa than that, that even if he doesn't, he can win. And this is but just the first step towards Kumagawa going from a born loser to a human. Now although Madaka showed Kumagawa that even a minus with the same mindset as him could win, and by beating him helped a lot of his development, it is not Madaka but Najimi who finally puts his flawed mindset to rest. After her death Najimi had but one more lesson to teach Kumagawa, the power of connection. As well, after being defeated by Madaka and joining the student council, Kumagawa did without doubt change. He still lost true, but his losses started to represent something else, and this is where the idea of Kumagawa losing for others comes into play. He loses so that his friends can win. The best example of this is his fight with Minakata. He lost. He died. But it was all to help Minakata. By dying at Minakata's hands, he showed the born killer that killing is boring. He saved him from his murderous desires by showing him the pains of winning. This again is shown in his fight with Shiranoe. He loses in order to get her to express her true feelings. He loses to expose her true feelings to the world. He makes something out of his losses, but still they are losses. 
He becomes a bit of a devil's advocate, as Madaka says herself, but Kumagawa even so still holds firm that he wants to win. One of the most telling examples of his remaining inability to win, though, comes when he faces Uzume Megasune and her imaginary monster. He imagines an unbeatable sword, something that should in theory win them the challenge, yet he fails, as even in his own mind, he cannot win. He can't even imagine a world where he wins. But at the end of the day, that's all it comes down to, imagination. It's all a simulated reality. As Najimi explains to him after her death, he is more than just a loser. By blowing up the loser star in the sky, she symbolically shows that even if you take away the loser, Kumagawa still remains, as there's more to him than just a loser. He's like a star of hope for those who know despair. His victory, no just his desire to win, brings infinite strength to the weak. Basically what Najimi shows through all this dialogue is that things like loser stars, born losers and being destined to lose are all nonsense. They are unimportant. They only matter to Kumagawa because he wants them to. Because as said already, without them he feels that his life is too cruel, the reality is too cruel. If he's not destined to lose, then why does he? That's the question he asks himself, but the answer is as simple as anything. He just needs to try and win. He needs to accept the good qualities he possesses and not be scared to try and be the good guy. It's due to his connection to Najimi, to Madaka, to all his new friends that he came to understand this simple lesson. The Kumagawa is more than a loser. And so with these connections, the things he always craved but denied himself, he is able to finally win. He bets on Madaka's survival at the end of the story and by doing so enters not a fight, but a leap of faith. He can make himself lose a fight by playing dirty or launching a surprise attack, but in this situation there's no loss in the win. All he can do is pray that his friend returns to him, that his connection is strong enough to break him free of the cycle of losing. However, Madaka not only lives, but returns, and by doing so ensures Kumagawa's win. It's down to his connection to her that he was finally able to win, as when you get down to it, that's what this whole story is about. It's about connection. And due to this connection, for the first time he wins in a fair fight and his arc comes to a close, he escapes the endless cycle of losing that he self-imposed on himself. Kumagawa was born under the wrong star, he is eternally unlucky, a minus among minuses, and never wins in a fair fight. Yet still, he won. As humans win and humans lose, no matter their nature nor their nurture, whether they be abnormal or minus, a human is a human, and Kumagawa is a human. Minuses in the world of Madaka Box are representative of a lot more than just being reality-breaking superpowers. As I explain in all my Madaka Box videos, minuses are representative of one's nurture in the same way abnormalities represent one's nature. Therefore, Kumagawa's minuses are direct reflections of his mind, almost specifically of the external forces that moulded him into the person he is. Now, although Bookmaker is his original minus, I want to first discuss All Fiction. Now, All Fiction is not Kumagawa's own minus, and is in reality a corrupted skill given to him by Najimi, one he made his own. Originally, it was the skill 100 gauntlets given to Kumagawa by Najimi. Yet after festering in the mind of Kumagawa, it changed and became a far more terrifying skill, All Fiction. All Fiction is a minus that makes things fiction. It can erase anything from objects to people to concepts. It is an unbeatable skill in a lot of ways, yet due to Kumagawa's nature, it's never a skill that lets him win. The simple fact all fiction erases reality is of course a physical manifestation of Kumagawa's own view on the world, as how did a young Kumagawa deal with his problems? He did so by erasing them. Kumagawa always lost, but he never tried to learn from those losses. Instead, he erased them so he didn't have to learn from them. He erased the things that led him to loss, but that in itself is not a win. You can't grow or win without reflecting on your losses, but Kumagawa's minus literally prevents this. Just like how he sees himself as an antagonist to deal with his losses, he uses all fiction to erase those things that led to loss. He prevents himself from growing or understanding why he is losing, as he keeps making things fiction. With all fiction, even if he dies, he will come back. His death will become fiction, which is very symbolic of his nature as a loser, to always lose but keep coming back. However, due to all fiction, he comes back good as new. He doesn't learn from the mistakes, as he isn't getting back up at all. He is just erasing the struggle and starting fresh. Growth cannot occur without hardship. Therefore, losing all fiction was essential for allowing Kumagawa to develop. He needed to lose it so he could not erase his loss to Madaka and so that he could learn from that loss. Which is why he traded that skill out before the fight, instead fighting with his true minus, Bookmaker. Now, Bookmaker speaks to a far deeper part of Kumagawa's psyche. The part that loves others, that wants companions, and at the same time, the part that wants to crush others and bring them down to his level, to make them suffer the same misfortune as him. It's a skill that lets him literally screw others, as by employing Bookmaker, Kumagawa can make someone equal to him in every way. That includes their skills, their strength, their intelligence, and of course, their mindset. 
All those under the effect of Bookmaker become the same as Kumagawa. They become as much a loser as him. By doing this and by seeing others fail because of it, Kumagawa can reassure himself that he is destined to lose, that anyone in his situation would be the same. It's not his fault he loses because that's just what someone like him is like. He allows people a look into his world, not so they can understand him, but so that they can suffer like him. The only exception to this being Madaka, who wins even under the effects of Bookmaker, showing his mindset wrong as already discussed. However, in every other situation, a win is impossible, which is also so very representative of Kumagawa. He doesn't let himself win. He finds a loss in every win, so his power, of course, puts him in a situation where victory is impossible. Two people equal in every way can only end up at a draw. While Bookmaker is activated, Kumagawa cannot win. It's poetic in such a way. And since minuses develop as a result of your nurture, then that means Bookmaker was not something Kumagawa was born with, instead it's something he developed due to his surroundings. In other words, due to his experience of being shaped by a world he believed was out to get him, Kumagawa developed such a terrifying power, as that's what the world can do to you when you are devoid of connection. So of course on the flip side, once Kumagawa gains connection and learns the joys of it, his minus evolves. April fiction is essentially just all fiction with a time limit. After a certain amount of time, the things erased by this skill return, and this, at least in my opinion, is incredibly significant. As by this point in the story, Kumagawa has begun to change. He had lost properly and now knew the beauty of companionship, yet he still fell back into nihilism and misfortune. He was yet to escape from it, but even so, he made progress. Hence, April Fiction. Before he erased all his problems, he turned a blind eye to them and made it so that they never existed to begin with. This ensured he could never move on, as he would never overcome his issues, just look away and make them fiction. However, now he knows he cannot do this. Even if he erases something, even if he looks away from his problems, they will return and he will have to overcome them. April Fiction then represents how much Kumagawa has grown, and at the same time, how much he has left to change. As you can see then, the various skills of Kumagawa are each incredibly symbolic of his mental state and character progression and are not something the power scalers should be fixated on, as at the end of the day, these powers of his are symbolic of something far more profound than just power and hack's abilities. They are a representation of one man's mental state, and that's how they should always be viewed. Plus, if you say that Kumagawa solo is X character, you really don't know Kumagawa, as the man doesn't win. To conclude this video then, I think we need to all just look back and visualize the change in Kumagawa. Before, Kumagawa wallowed in his misfortune and took it out on others and the world, but now having been reformed and having discovered how life isn't meaningless, after being shown he has good traits and that he can win, Kumagawa can instead use his natural misfortune to help others. As he says to the student body as he graduates, no matter how bad your life is, how harshly you lose, how misfortunate or depressed you feel, remember, I will always be worse off than you. Instead of taking his misfortune out on others, he instead now uses it to give strength to others. And this is the lesson I think we can all learn from Kumagawa, that you need to learn from your losses and not erase your issues. You need to face them head on and strive for victory even if you end up losing. Aiming for victory is just as important as victory itself. We may all lose, but even so, we can win one day. So just like Kumagawa reminds the student council, I will remind all of you now. If you ever feel bad, just remember, Kumagawa has it worse off, and if that person who is worse off than you, the biggest loser of them all, could develop and find victory at least once, then so can you. As that's the beauty of Kumagawa's character. Sure, he will keep on struggling and keep on losing, but he will now do so in a good way, with one win under his belt, as that is the person he has become. After all, in Madaka Box, no matter how strong you are, what skills you possess, or what your mentality is, at the end of the day, you are just human. And so even if he is less lucky than the average person, Kumagawa is and always will be just a human. Comment of the week comes from Swetha N and I'm so glad you enjoyed the detailings I put into my videos. If you're interested in my literary endeavours, then why not check out my books Gang Fluid Justice and People of Fate Volume 1, available at Amazon.com. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel, then consider pledging to my Patreon, where for as little as £2.75 a month, you can get your name at the end of the video like Hikari Desu, 7SO, Smokey McBobby, Rinjak9696, and Dewey. So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.